Welcome, you are in the playroom with Steve Henning. This is the first inaugural show of this thing I'm hoping that will be huge. And I think I've found the perfect guest for the first show. He is your salesman of the cellular, the clown prince of podcast. He is my brother from another mother, Brian Etheridge. Hey, hey man. Were we not? I thought we were gonna. We're not gonna kiss. No. Okay, that's okay. <laughs> that fun. What's going on, brother? Have a seat. Cool. It's looking good in here. Thank looking, you. looking playful. Thank looking you for fun. Be, thank you for being here. Yeah. No sweat. Uh, My pleasure. So uh, before we get down into the personal stuff, what brings you to the playroom? Well, this has been a goal of mine to be on your show that just got invented for a long time now. <laughs> it's uh. It's, it's, it really is a pleasure being here, but basically what I wanted to go over myself is uh, our new podcast. Uh, Don and I, Don Henning, we have a podcast that we're going to be starting back up. Uh, we used to have a show called uh, The Brian and Don Show. Very briefly, it was The Don and Brian Show. After a lot of uh, inner fighting and me winning a couple uh, fist fights, it was The Brian and Don Show again. You know, anybody yeah. knows Don knows. I don't want no fist fight against Don. <laughs> but then we changed it. We agreed that we were going to change the name to Best Friends. Did two or three shows, went on hi- hiatus for a little while. Uh, we had a couple little of annoying little things in our lives, like I had a baby, blah, 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 you know what I'm saying? <laughs> had to take a break uh, from podcasting for a while, but we're going to start it back up uh, soon. Uh, you can find all of the old episodes, though, on iTunes. It's under Don's Couch, uh, D-O-N-S, Couch. Couch. You know how to spell it. Yes. <laughs> you can find it on there. Just look up Don's Couch. It's got all kinds of stuff on there. Um, but whenever it comes back up, it'll be under best friends. All right. Um, I did, I got the pleasure of hearing a couple of your guys' old podcasts. Some of the funniest material I've ever heard. Oh, yeah. Um, broadcast. Um, what, what do you hope to bring to the new podcast or how will it be different from the old podcast? I think the first thing, just from an actual professional standpoint is production value. You know what I mean? Uh, from Don's perspective, he's been into everything from the behind the scenes uh, area, like recording, editing, all that kind of stuff. Like th- th- he's just studied so hard, studied the craft and like he knows everything so well now, you know, he's always been the tech guy and everything like that. So like he's not only w- one of the main personalities on the show, he's also does everything behind the scenes. And in the meantime, I personally have done nothing. I've done nothing to better the show or myself or the podcast for that matter. You'll pretty much get the same stuff from me that you've gotten from the podcast, which is a pretty mediocre jokes and in general gross stuff. I'll just say gross stuff. Yeah. yeah. Now, now you and Don are two of the funniest guys I know, if not the two funniest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Will your podcast? Will your podcast have a certain? Do you have a certain topic you want to stick to, or is it going to be kind no. of a random? No way. The podcast started with Don and I driving around in the in his car. Okay, mm-hmm. we used to drive to Louisville all the time, St. Louis. We would drive around and we would have these conversations and like people that were riding with us would join in the conversation and it was always really funny and we'd look back on it we would remember these jokes and I remember one of the things for me was like I wish we wrote this stuff down so I could go later and like revisit this stuff so it actually the whole podcast uh, concept like I'm not going to say we invented it right but like we were way ahead of the game like we were we had that idea like in like 1998 I'm yeah. sure nobody was doing it back then but like that was like the main concept is that we just wanted to like remember our jokes, you yeah. know what I mean, and uh, that's that's how it came to pass. So like, that's kind of what we do on our podcast. We just we, we do we don't script anything. There's no plan when we go into it. We just hit record and we have a conversation. We have somebody come on with us, a friend of ours, somebody from around the area. Uh, we've had musicians on before, just different things like that, and uh, just cover whatever. We just go wherever the conversation takes us. Sometimes we'll do topical stuff like. Uh, you know, if there's something in the news that's kind of like fresh on everybody's mind, we'll cover that. Uh, sports, MMA, like we do a ton of MMA. Mm-hmm. We do, I mean, yeah. if previously we did a ton of MMA, we'll probably scale back on that just a little bit uh, because our previous podcasts were really heavy yeah. on MMA. So uh, we'll probably sprinkle in uh, some other stuff pretty good. Um, so uh, really, there was no demographic. There's no genre other than comedy. I mean, it's just we're trying to be funny. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we are. What are your... Um... If you have any, what are your expectations of this podcast? Very little. Very little. <laughs> no, listen. Like I said, really for me, and this is this is just me being very candid. I listen to the the old podcast all of the time. Like it's for my own enjoyment. Like it's 
It's for me to get like people that I think are hilarious in the same room with Don and then listen to them tell jokes and then mm-hmm. every once in a while like jump on their jokes. You know what I mean? Like they'll tell go. jokes yeah. and I'll be like, I'll make that kind of uh, not as funny. You know what I mean? I just very much play like, you know, the uh, the Jerry Lewis to Don's D. Martin. You know what I mean? Very good. He looks way better in a suit though. Everybody knows that. Um, can you give us the information of the podcast one more time? Yeah, I mean, you guys can find it. It's called uh, Best Friends. Uh, that's the name of the show. You can find it on iTunes. Uh, type in Best Friends. You can find us. It's probably going to be some type of ridiculous picture of like me and Don, like Turkish oil wrestling or like, uh, I don't know, like arm wrestling with brass knuckles. Like some type of picture like that. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. I mean, there's a lot of options there. I'll likely be nude, though, in the picture. I will be nude in the picture. For well, sure. I'll be the first one to enjoy that, then. I know you will. <laughs> <laughs> now, I got you in here, and I'll let you talk a little bit about what you want to talk about, but you know that you're trapped now for the next 10 minutes or so, so I've got a couple of questions for you, if you don't mind to answer them. Oh, I love it. Shoot. Um, You were talking about the podcast being one of your goals. Um, mm-hmm. Other than that, what is something big that you haven't done that is probably important that you do? I would say at this point in my life, uh, one of my biggest goals, and this is just outside of my family and stuff like that, like a personal goal for me is, and this is no joke, I would like to, in the next calendar year at some point, compete in or be a part of a professional wrestling match. And that's a real thing for me. Like, I really want to do that. I, it's not like uh, like I want to be the next you know, Hulk Hogan or something like that, yeah. which I probably could most likely. I mean, you know, he wasn't even that big. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, I would like that? to, I would very much like to do that. Outside of that, uh, I, you know, uh, Don and I both are uh, martial artists and stuff like that. I would like to commit to that again and just do something on that level. Really just uh, something, some type of athletic endeavor. Mm-hmm. Ende- Did I say endeavor? Endeavor. I'm not sure what I just heard. <laughs> endeavor? Like, what is going on? <laughs> so just something in athletics. Just, you know, stuff that I put on the back burner and then like this year I'm like, Oh crap! I'm super old. I need to start doing these things before my body's not capable. And I'm probably gonna hurt myself very badly. It's gonna yeah. end up poorly. But I'd like to, like to take a crack at, at something like that this year. There you go. What's what's a big goal that you have achieved that you're proud of, personally? Um, <clears throat> on a personal level, yeah. um, a big achievement for me. I think, realistically. Um, Whenever I think of achievements, it's it all comes down to interpersonal relation relationships. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like uh, the value that I place on my relationships is is uh, bigger than anything else that I could accomplish personally. You know what I mean? So I think right now it's just the time that I'm spending with my kids. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, yes. and that kind of thing. That's my biggest. Okay, anything that I'll ever do in this world will never measure up to my kids yes. and how good of people they are. Yes. I mean, I don't know. Lucy's only seven months. She she may be a jerk. I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> Well, if you watch this later in your life, Lucy, I'm sorry if you're in. It. If you are a jerk, I told you. Um, so, uh, speaking of age, you're 31 now. How is 31 year old Brian different from 21 year old Brian? How much? Have, how have you changed in the last 10 years? If 21 year old Brian was in a room with 31 year old Brian for five minutes, I would have already beat the life out of him. <laughs> he was the worst. No, uh, I would say I, I think uh, at this point in my life, uh, life in general has caused me to kill a ton of my ego. Whenever I was 20 year old, like any 21 year old, like my entire life was driven uh, purely by ego. It was all ego driven. I mean, that was, I mean, that was my whole life. And uh, I think at 21 year old Brian, I think I was just coming back to Evansville after having ran away uh, to the West Coast of America, purely out of fear for my best friend Don. Uh, We lived together, we were roommates, and uh, he went out of town and you can't you at, th- at that point or at this point don't leave me in your house by myself don't don't leave me if if you have nice things or a nice place don't leave me alone in it under any circumstances cuz i'll take liberties I'll, I'll i'll i will i will abuse your trust let's just be honest okay so don went out of town for a concert well, you know, i'll keep this short went out of town for a concert he went out of town and said i'll have a party 60 people showed up not a big deal they trashed the house. I got scared. I ran away across the country. Wow. Probably not the best way to handle that. That's what I did. That's 21-year-old Brian. 31-year-old Brian, I'd have my wife call down and apologize for me, and then we'll be fine. <laughs> so I'm smarter now is basically what I'm saying. All right. How much has fatherhood changed you? <clears throat> everything. everything. It has changed everything about my life, every single thing. Um, 
I think at this point, like being a father for the past almost eight years, there's that filter now that I used to not have, right? So like I, I'm, I'm going to do something. Like every time I drive past Harky during the summer when it's open and it's nighttime, my thought is I could just jump that fence and I could go swimming right now by myself, yeah. right? And then it's not weird and like people aren't in there with their shoes and like pooping in the water and stuff. <laughs> like I could get in that fresh, fresh water. And now it's like, I'm a dad. I can't get busted for trespassing, right? Like, I'm at the mall. I'm in the candy store. It's like, I'll have a handful of these Tootsie Rolls. Nobody's going to know. But then I think, what if I'm in the newspaper stealing Tootsie Rolls? That's forever. I don't want my kids to know about that. So there's that, there's that dad filter. You know what I mean? That's probably the main thing, for sure. All right. Um, in your 31 years of life, what do you think has been the hardest thing for you to have to go through or have to have dealt with? The hardest thing for me to have to have dealt with. It's probably like a twofold thing. Uh, on, on like an existential level, just like the, like the reality of uh, how dangerous the world is, like with my kids, you know what I mean? Like it's just constant, you know, not to, not to say that parenting is awful or any way, but like if you're a soon to be parent, uh, my twin brother, Eli, shout out to him. He's, he's gonna, he's a soon to be parent. Uh, you'll never stop being terrified. Welcome to the terror show, because, like, you're just going to be scared for the rest of your life. It's awesome. It comes with a lot. But one of the adverse side effects of parenthood is you're just scared of everything now. You're just for sure everything's going to kill your kid, you know. <laughs> so that's hard. You know, that, that was hard to deal with. And then uh, about two years ago, my grandfather passed. And that, by far, is the worst thing I've ever had to go through, you know. And, and I've come to terms with it now, you know. And I think at 30 years old, you know, people kind of expect you to just, you know, uh, buck up and, and move on and stuff like that. But... I don't want to be one of those people that makes it sound like their relationship with their with their father, grandfather, anything like that is more special than anybody else's. Mm -hmm. But um, for me, like I, you know, he, my grandfather really was my best friend. He yeah. was my best friend. He was my everything. You yeah. know, and he was he was the cornerstone. And, and I'm sure you can relate to this. You know, uh, he was the cornerstone of our family. You know, and uh, everything to me. So that was a big blow for me, but, uh, I think perspective was something that I definitely gained out of that. You know, I always try to spin some kind of positive out of everything and, uh, just being able to really truly quantify what it was that he meant to my life and in all the different ways that he impacted me. You know what I mean? So, uh, I think, uh, that was the hardest thing I ever had to deal with, but you know, it, at the same time, it, it made it easy for me to kind of grasp the inevitability of it all. You yeah. know what I mean? Not to get too existential or anything yeah. like that, but, uh, you know, I think it helped me deal with mortality. Not mm -hmm. to get too serious, but yeah, that was definitely the hardest thing I ever dealt with. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that put you through your hardest thing. What was what was the best thing you've been through or your best moment so far? The birth of my kids, 100%. The greatest moments of my life, the, the greatest joy of my life was, was the birth of my kids. I just, uh, I, I couldn't possibly explain to you uh, what my kids mean to me. You know, I, I could be that cliche dad and be like, they're my baby angels, I love my baby angels. But it's, you know, they're they're just, it, to put it in perspective, how I look at it is this, is that like, before my kids, there was a ton of regret in my life. I felt like I made a lot of mistakes and everything like that. Once my kids came along, every mistake that I've ever made in my life, every misstep, every road that I felt like I should have traveled and dip, didn't, they all just became stepping stones to lead me to this perfect place. You know, my life is far from perfect. But, I mean, if I die right now, right, just feeling that love for a second is more than I could ever live for. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, that's the greatest, greatest accomplishment of my life. Um, I'm talking about your kids, what is one message you would want to convey to them? Or what's one thing you'd want them to know? <clears throat> Everything that I could have done or left for them in this world or done myself personally doesn't matter. The only thing that ever matters is that I love them unconditionally. And that's all I ever expect from them. I don't expect anything else. I don't expect them to be the next president or a doctor or a lawyer or anything like that. All I expect for them is to love people unconditionally. And that's it. I mean, that's, I mean, that's all that matters to me. And that's what I hope all that matters to them for me. That's all I want them to care about. I don't want them to care that I got this sweet ponytail man bun. Yeah, that is it sweet. is sweet. I look like Renzo Lamas from Renegade. I know that. But does this matter? Yes, it does. I forgot about this. This actually means more. Than what I just said. Okay. Love people unconditionally, but to Braylon, my son, grow a man bun. A man it bun. makes you better than everyone else. Nice. That's a fact. Okay. I'll, I would do that, but uh, the, the gardens kind of went dry up there, so... Uh, it looks sweet. You look like Stone Cold when he was the ringmaster. 
That's okay. a compliment. Well, then I'm just one step away from greatness. You're right there, dude. You nice. need your 316. Yes, I You'll do. get your Steve 316. How do you want your friends to remember you? Um, how do I want my friends to remember me? Yeah. Uh, friends and family. <laughs> friends and family? Yeah. Um, not to keep going with this well, man, but if I'm being honest, the only thing I ever want them to remember, yet, remember me as is a good father. You know? Like... That's kind of the reason for the podcast and, you know, doing stuff like this so people can see, like, what my personality was like and yeah. stuff like that. But realistically, the only legacy I would ever want to leave behind, if it just says it on my tombstone, father, husband, you know, brother, friend, maybe that kind of stuff. But, you know, father first. You know? All right. Awesome. Um, I'm going to get a little dark for a second. I like that. Um, Are we talking true blood dark or, like... Well, I'll just, I'll, I'll just read you the okay. question, and you can see how dark I went. Hit me. Um, we're at your funeral. Nice. You have artist of your choice playing your final song. Prince. And what is he singing? Purple Rain. That's the easiest question of my entire life. Okay. Now, who's giving your eulogy? Also Prince. Prince is giving your eulogy. This is the only eulogy I want. I'm going to play it out for you guys right now. This is Prince. Uh, camera guy, if you could zoom in on my face real quick. <clears throat> this is the eulogy I want Prince to give me. That's it. That explains my life. That's all I want. Purple Rain, tiny eulogy, tiny man, giant love. Giant heart, giant love, all of it. And then I want him to kiss my dead lips. I didn't understand that until you just explained it right there. And then I... You're welcome. Every syllable, <laughs> I, I understand. Um, you mentioned your twin Eli, which uh -huh. I hope he'll be on the show at some point in the future, but uh, uh -huh. we'll talk about that at another time. Um, but you and him are twins. How are you two most alike? Um, most alike? Most alike. Um, I think our biggest similarity is, and I keep going to this well, man, and I'm sorry, but the value we place on family. You know, like, uh, <clears throat> I, I think both of us, uh, we consider ourselves a tight-knit family, you know, uh, amongst each other and everything like that. And as far as, like, similarities go, I mean... No, the only person that probably loves my kids more than I do is him. You know what I mean? Uh, on a real level. So I think that's probably our, our biggest similarities. And then, like, our love for sports and our love for video games and stuff like that. Like, that's, that's like, our biggest character. But our biggest similarity is our actual speaking voice. Yeah. You cannot tell the difference. We're twins. We look nothing alike. But you can't tell us apart. Close your eyes. He's on the show right now. We'll both be talking to each other. It's sounding like I'm talking to myself. Wow. That's right? Sound yeah. like Eli was there, right? Exactly. It's weird. Yeah. What's the biggest difference between you two? Uh, we'll just we'll just say straight up vulnerability, right? Like my favorite things in the world are like you know music and arts and performing in the podcast and stuff like that and like uh, putting myself creatively out there, which for Eli interests him none <laughs> at all. You know what I mean? Like uh, just. Not that he's not a creative person. He's he's very creative. It's just I'm kind of like, get, let's get it out there. Let's let's uh, let people in on what I got going on and stuff like that. And it just doesn't interest him at all. Like the arts, you know, there's a very uh, artistic side to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think Eli murdered his artistic side with a knife like a long time ago. Nice. Yeah. Okay. I've um, got one more two-part question for you. We're in an alternate universe where you are married to one of your friend's wives. Uh-huh. Who's your wife in this alternate universe? Ooh, this is tough, right? Yeah. Gun to my head? Yes. Oh, let's just let's just say who's got the biggest boobs? Who's who is it? Let's let's figure that out. All of our friends uh, say, uh, say, probably Don's wife, right? I'd say so. Let's think about it. Let me think about all my friends' wives' boobs. I try not to get caught doing that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, I'm still thinking. What'd you say? I did, I was exactly. thinking boobs. I didn't know. Yeah, you know, it would have to be. Yeah, because okay. if, if I've got to, if I have to choose, right? I mean, what's life about? Exactly. Boobies. So yeah, that's it. Congratulations, you win. Second part of that question, you win. Who is your wife with? Oh, um, any of my gay friends? Hardly any of them? Pick hard, one. Hardly unfair, but uh, yeah. uh, um, uh. Do they have to be single, married? What are we talking here? This uh, is alternate universe. Alternate universe. I get to pick my wife's husband. Okay. Yeah, in this universe, we'll say you did. Okay. Well, um, I guess if I'm married to Don's wife, he could be. He could be married to my. No, I don't want that. I don't <laughs> want that. 
No, that's weird for me. I don't want that to happen anymore. Um, okay, alternate universe. My wife never meets me. She never takes a lover and, and uh, lives her life alone. All right. You're welcome, honey. Okay, uh, this is the first show. I do want to thank you for being here. I had asked Brian to sing for us, but he forgot his guitar, so maybe next time we can get you on the show and maybe nudge him into singing. I do have a game I want to play uh. called Boobs, Butt, or Nah. Oh, I like this. I've got a list of 16 celebrities, <laughs> okay. if, you want, if you want to call them all celebrities, mm -hmm. and you will tell me if their best feature is their boobs, okay. their butt, or, nah, never mind. Just nothing? Just nothing. Okay. I like this So uh, we're going to we're gonna finish this up, hopefully strong. Okay. And, uh, so I'm here, focused. My, yeah. I'm harnessing my chi. I'm so good. So you ready? Okay. So your, your answers are boobs, butt, or nah. Okay. Kate Upton. No. Nah. No. Nah. Oh, Kate Upton. I was thinking Kate Moss. Kate Moss oh. is gross. Kate Upton? Oh, baby. Okay. Well, let's say boobs. Okay. Let's say boobs on that one. Boobies, for sure. Katy Perry. God, oh, man. Come on, dude. Come on. It's like, it's for my kids I like the best. <laughs> uh, we'll go boobs. Okay. Lindsay Lohan. Ugh. Syphilis. Nah. 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 Okay. Zoe Deschanel. Ugh. Nah. Not a fan? Nah. Oh, I like yeah, that. You know, until I watch New Girl, and then I watch New Girl, which, uh, New Girl is what I like to call, uh, I can't wait until Zoe Deschanel's not on the camera anymore so the show can be funny. <laughs> no offense to anybody that likes it. Nah, you know what? Total offense. I don't like it. I don't like her. I don't like it. Sandra Bullock. Speed Sandra Bullock? Or like blindside Sandra Whatever Bullock. Whatever Sandra Bullock you want to picture in your mind. Sandra Bullock, 1995 speed, but. Okay. Taylor Swift. Nah. Yeah. Nikki Bella. Who? Nikki Bella. Which one is with the big hooters? Nikki Bella. Boobs. Okay. Yeah. For any of these celebrities you guys don't know, you are on the internet. Go look them up. I don't have pictures to share, so imagine it or go look them up. Um, Trish Stratus. Boobs. Uh, Betty White. Boobs. Nice. Betty White's got big boobs. Jennifer Aniston. Nah. Oprah. And she, she insists upon herself. She insists upon herself. Nah. Okay. Oprah. Oprah got that booty. Yeah. Oprah got that big old billionaire booty. Yeah. <laughs> Nicki Minaj. Ugh. No. 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 She's made of gross and I think she's filled with snakes. <laughs> you know what I mean? She's just... Ugh. Nah. Selena Gomez. I don't know what she looks like. Okay. Well, we'll just go on. Hillary Clinton. But. But. Wow. Yeah. That surprised me. Yeah. Kim Kardashian. Nah. Nah. And, and uh, finally, uh, Ellen hey, DeGeneres. Hold on. I'm not going to be that guy. Boobs. Kim Kardashian boobs. Sorry. Go ahead. Ellen DeGeneres to finish the list. Oh, man. Can I... I don't know. I don't want to say nah to Ellen because I want her to be my best friend. But she's got nothing, nothing going on. I'm just yeah. saying nah. Yeah. Nah, Ellen. She does have a man butt, but she's yeah, funny. Not, no offense. You yeah. know? She's what she's working with. I understand. Um, I, got, I got a woman's butt. No big deal. Brian, I do want to thank you for being my first guest. It's I hope pleasure. this, this takes awesome. off wildly. Is it over? Already? It, yeah, we're going to gonna finish up. I'm going to tell people to be looking for your podcast with you and Don Henning, my little brother. Yeah. Um, what's what's the name of it again one more time? Best Friends. 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 Let's go. Hey, guys, this is on YouTube. If, you, if you're watching it there, please subscribe. If you're on Facebook... Please share it. Get it out there. If you want to be on the show, just get in contact with me through my Facebook page. Thanks again, Brian. Uh, thanks, Don, for setting up the video and doing all this for me. I couldn't do it without you guys. So I hope this is the start of something big. Thank you for being in the playroom.